Hi, I'm John from Proper Printing, and as you can see, this is my new, this is my new studio. So I've more room than uh, in the previous one. Nice work surface. I'm going to show a lot on this surface. So I start with, yeah, I have finally bought an Ender three. And this is what I'm going to talk about in this video. I've seen that this is a, a very popular machine for good reason, I think. And yeah, I want to know what all that fuss is about. Yeah, I'm going to unpack this uh, this thing and then show you some, uh, some steps that uh, I would do at first. Yeah, I already cut this open. So, well, let's see what's inside this box. There it is. Awesome. Uh, that was a lot of work. I'm not going too far into details of how you put this uh, thing actually together because there are more than enough YouTube videos uh, regarding that subject. I've used the video of the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors. Uh, I think that's a very good one. I was planning to make one myself, but I saw his video and I decided not to because he basically said everything that I wanted to do. My goal with this printer is to use this as a production machine. So my goal is to make this printer to print as accurate as possible, to make it reliable and yeah, and able to print those engineering materials. I will do it with uh, some main subjects and the subject of today, this first video is Build this as, as good as possible so that everything is parallel to each other, perpendicular and yeah, straight, flat. I have already added these uh, cable chains, well the cable clips for the cable management. I will put a link of all the upgrades into the description of this video. I'm going to pick a few things which I thought was uh, particularly important of that video of uh, the three house of 3D horror printing tomb of 3D printed horrors I have to remember that name if you um, put this against these two uh, profiles then they should be aligned because there is some uh, some give uh, under here uh, another important thing the distance between those these two beams on the bottom must be the same as at the top so it kind of speaks for itself but it, it yeah it doesn't uh, out of the box i encountered one problem that uh, the guy of the tomb of 3d printer horrors did not mention this beam here must be perpendicular to this beam uh, on the base if it's not and these two can be parallel you can Get a pr parallelogram, is that how you pronounce it? To prevent that, I had to use, I'm going to show it. I've put some material here, under there, because mine wasn't perpendicular, and I couldn't get this uh, perpendicular by just uh, tightening down those two screws. I needed to, to fill it up with uh, some material, and I still had some, uh, some thin sheets of copper brass actually uh, lying around and I've put that under there until it was uh, perpendicular which I've measured with this uh, set square for all the other steps like uh, tightening the bed and how you 
get this horizontal. All those uh, points are covered in his uh, video. Well, I will continue with uh, my findings. Yeah, one thing that I have encountered is that this beam is not perpendicular to this. There is room. It's too much for my taste. That's the first upgrade I'm going to do. And those are the Z-braces. I've redesigned my own Z-axis brace. I'm going to put that on this machine as my first custom upgrade to make this even stiffer and to make this perfectly perpendicular. These are the parts that I've designed and they are they're put on the side of the machine. So I will quickly screw those on and then uh, we can continue. I have two M10 threaded rods. And some nuts and stuff. So I'm going to put those on there. And this is the first rod. It really looks awesome. Now we'll put on the other one. Put this on the, the edge of the table. Okay, just in time I figured out that the microphone is straight in the middle of all the action. Put on the rod here. Screw this on. Far enough. And wash you. Now I'm going to tighten this below. And you should do that with uh, as much uh, force as you uh, probably can. So tighten it really good. This material is strong enough, so you can really put all your strength you have. Put it here. Then you're sure that this uh, this is fixed. Okay, I'm going to do that for the other. I think this is too small. Man. Now this on the bottom is uh, is fixed. I'm going to use this small set square uh, to make this higher. So I can easily place it against here. There is a little gap here below. So this beam must go that direction. So this must be loosened and this must be tightened and then fasten this. And now this is perfect. Yeah, now the same on this side, but there's this uh, thing in the way. So I will loosen it. If I place this here, then there is room at the top. So this beam should go into that direction. Awesome. And now it's very stiff. You can really feel that it's super stiff right now. This is awesome. So the thing I have to do right now is uh, making sure that the bed is perfectly flat because you can of course adjust it. I hope that this video won't be too long. There is a lot I want to show on this topic because I think it's very important that these f the first steps are uh, performed correctly. So with these simple upgrades, you can already get a lot out of this machine. Okay, my next uh, step will be replacing... Oh, <laughs> there's already one gone. Uh, replacing these uh, bed leveling knobs. At first, the uh, CR10 was uh, delivered with these small knobs. And you have uh, these upgrades which makes the knobs bigger, like this one. I did that upgrade too for my uh, CR10. But there is one downside of this, uh, this knob. Once this bed is flat, you don't want to touch these anymore. I came up with a solution from which I think works. I've made these uh, things also with threaded inserts. 
but I'm going to upload a version uh, in which you can place a nut uh, too. And what it does, it uh, consists of two parts. This part is screwed in and this snaps in it so you can uh, adjust it. And uh, the purpose of this knob is that once you have uh, set the height, you can move this up and put it away in the back so you don't actually touch it. I'm going to put those four on, uh, on this bed. Uh, yeah, I'm going, yeah. Uh, I will screw this on. And let's say when this is the actual position you want it to get it in, you can just loosen this and rotate it over to the back. And then it will stay there. As you probably have noticed, all upgrades I will do for this machine. I do it with this translucent PETG. I really like that color and I think it suits the sprinter well. And uh, this way you can easily see what I've uh, done to it. During all uh, the coming videos you will see more and more blue parts uh, on this. Okay, these are my leveling knobs. It feels promising. Okay, now I've added these two upgrades. If it turns out that this video is already at uh, the, the 15 minute mark, then um, yeah, I will end this video by uh, thanking you a lot for, uh, for watching. If you made it all the way here, then uh, yeah, thanks a lot. You know, if you want to increase your uh, print quality and uh, get the most out of 3D printing, then I definitely recommend subscribing so you won't miss uh, any of my future videos. So again, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, see you in the next video. Bye.